Hi there. Are you the type of guitarist who has a settlement of progressions and chords under your hands, but you're looking for new ways, new chord progressions, and ways to actually magnify the knowledge you already have? If you're one of those guitarists, you've come to the right place. My name is Jed Brocky. This is GMI. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, this is now video 8, if I'm counting correctly, video 8. Um, we're fairly getting through them. Hopefully you've been looking at the previous videos. Um, if you're just dipping in, this whole uh, series of videos uh, relates to a book uh, released by GMI, written by myself, called Drop Two Voices Uncovered. I'm not going to go into it all. Hopefully you look back at some of the previous lessons where you learn all about it and there's loads of material uh, to learn, uh, explained and free giveaways in each one of those lessons. In this lesson, uh, which relates to lesson 10 in the book, uh, we're looking at the 1, 6, 4, 5 progression. Uh, we've already covered the 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 progression. Um, but before I actually play the chords to the backing track that you can get your hands on, I wanted to talk about synonyms. Now, in a previous lesson, we had talked about synonyms, um, and it was to do with major six chords and minor sevenths, but this is a real power synonym. Uh, a lot of people uh, really don't know this information, or at least I don't think they do. And if you watch this video, you're going to see how you can use a chord in many different ways. So, um, the chords that we'll be looking at, if I can refer back to the diatonic uh, chord structures that were shown in, I think, the last lesson, uh, we looked at playing up the neck using these diatonic progressions. And you may have noticed that um, in some of in, in the, the seventh position, we had what was called a minor 7 flat 5 chord. Um, and for the eagle-eyed ones amongst you, you may also have realised that that was also being used in another lesson that we talked to uh, about, which was dominant ninths. So you might be wondering how the same shape is being used in both as a minor 7 flat 5 and a dominant ninth. And that's what I really wanted to cover before we go on to the, you know, the one six two eight one six four five one progression, so we can see it visually. Um, if I play this chord here, that can be known as D nine. It doesn't have the root. There's an implied root, and it it, it could probably possibly go into G major. Hear that? But this shape some of you may also know as a minor 7 flat 5 chord and this would be used in, in this way so we can hear this resolution to E minor I want to show you a simple way of understanding how the how chords equal each other so you can see over there just now uh, a, a triad root, third, fifth, the major triad. And what we're going to do is take those X's and we're going to put in uh, a C major triad. So what you now have is C, E and G. And the way this works is you can put any triad into there and the values you now see are always good. So under the root, you've got the ninth. Under the third, you've got the minor seven flat five. And under the fifth, you've got the minor 6. So what if, if we put some values in the end, we've got C9 equals E minor 7 flat 5 equals G minor 6. They all have the same notes as hopefully you can now see. So what does that mean to you as a guitar player? Well, what it means is you can, you may always have thought of this shape as a minor 7 flat 5. But it's 
F sharp pick seven. Let's use one. We're, we're using. Let's play it here. It's e minor seven flat five. Okay. But what I'm saying to you is, it's all also G minor six. And it is C nine. So that means if you know any one shape, it's suddenly magnified in the way you can use it. Now a lot of people might know this as a ninth. It's kind of obvious. Here's a shape here. That's B minor 7 flat 5, but it's also G9, and it's also D minor 6. So it's important that you really take time to absorb this. You need to know your major triads to really get the most out of this, because we can put other major triads in there. If we put uh, D, the D major triad, you can see that D9 equals F sharp minor 7 flat 5 equals A minor 6. <clears throat> and that means you can find mm -hmm. chords that you wouldn't normally associate, like this one here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, we'll go back to the shape here. We'll play it down there. There's D minor. That's F sharp minor 7 flat 5. I'm also saying it's D9. Yeah? It's also A minor 6. So we're going to be using uh, these chords in, in different ways throughout the, the rest of the lessons. I hope this has been of help. It's, it's a, a topic that isn't talked about a, a lot, but it's a, it's a huge force multiplier in terms of knowing the shapes you have and how you use them. And we're going to use them, some of these shapes, in what's coming up. We're going to use it in a 1-6-4-5 progression. Now, if you've watched uh, the previous lessons, you'll know what I'm talking about, and I'd like you to look back if you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's got one caveat. We're using a 1-6-4-5 progression, which goes back and repeats itself. And we're going to be playing chords down the neck, chords that you can actually uh, download. You can download the sheet and use yourself. But when we go back to the one chord, we're actually going to sub actually substitute chord 3 in the progression. So we're going to be using C major and chord 3 in C major is E minor. So we're going to go C major 7, A minor 7, F major 7, G9 and instead of going back to C major we're going to go to E minor. We're going to substitute E minor for the C major chord and on screen you'll be able to see why that works. It's basically the same notes. And all this does is it, it creates a nice uh, change to the, to the chords. Most of the time this will work for you. You've sometimes got to watch depending on the melody box. So enough of me talking. Hopefully you're going to download the PDF and the, the shortened backing track and play along. So I'll just now get ready and we'll play this track. I hope you like it. lesson theoretically wise. Um, I hope you heard that that chord 3 made a nice transition. It's something you can put in and substitute for chord 1 when uh, it's going through the same cycle. You'll find a lot of the time you can do this and it won't interfere with the overall sound uh, of, of the song. Uh, I'd love you to give comments and thoughts. Um, the synonym thing was quite a, a heavy thing but it's a, a massive Massive in the fact you can play chords that you probably only relegate to one type of chord, you can now find another two. So please subscribe, uh, please download the materials, and comments are always welcome. It's been uh, great taking you through this lesson. Uh, please check out the next one.
which will be on something totally different. My name's Jed Brocky, this is GMI, I'll see you on the next one.